Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back for another edition of Intuitive Angling. Much appreciated you guys taking a little bit of time out of your day. And man, we are getting close. It's not, we're not there yet, but we're getting close. It's right around the corner to wacky rig season. And man, this is like one of my favorite ways to catch bass. It has got to be, I, I put a wacky rig in my top three of the most effective bass catching techniques ever that you can use. It is deadly, guys. And I'm telling you, if you don't wacky rig, you need to start wacky rigging. What I'm going to show you guys today is my secret finesse wacky, wacky rig setup. I mean, most people, uh, you know, traditionally in most wacky rig situations, they're using like either a Zoom trick worm, full size trick worm, or like a five or six inch Cinco, you know, soft plastic stick bait. I've got a finesse setup here. I'm going to show you guys that, uh, you know, will get you a lot more bites and it'll catch good, it'll catch good fish too in a lot of different situations. So real quick, just wanted to give you guys a, a little reminder here. If you hadn't had a chance to subscribe to the channel, please do. Uh, at the end of the month, we've got our week, our monthly giveaway of Bridgeford Sweet Baby Ray Beef Jerky case of it. And uh, when we hit 60,000 subscribers, we're also going to have a big uh, Bridgeford uh, giveaway, Solar Bat Sunglasses Seaguar line. And man, if you guys have not tried the Bridgeford Sweet Baby Ray Jerky, give it a try, man. It is like candy. You can't put a bag down. And they're, the company is a great supporter of uh, bass fishing, so much appreciated with that. Okay, guys, let's talk a little bit about this secret finesse dig, jig, or secret wacky rig deal. This is a simple setup. It's really simple. There's not much to it. Um, I'm going to give you guys, I'm going to show you how to rig it, what it is, and then I'm going to show you or give you some tips on how to fish it and everything. First of all, here's the setup. Here's my secret deal. This is the zoom beat down. This is actually for a Ned rig right here. It's only three inches long. Um, this is the setup I use. First of all, there's a couple of different things I do to it. You know, I'll rough it up. Really critical on this bait to rough it up because you want, the more you can rough it up on this short little bait since, since you don't have the length on it to vibrate, you need to rough it up to get it soft here. And one end of it, you can see, is already sort of tapered down. So what I'll do is the one end of it sort of squared off. So I'll take and I'll take a pair of scissors or nippers, and I'm going to sort of make it a little bit more pointy on the end. Just uh, since this is a visual bait, you, every little bit can help as far as the visual attracting. So I think making it a little bit more pointy on there makes it a little bit more uniform. Next thing I do is I take a 2 lot. This is like a two watt Gamagatsu drop shot hook. And if you guys have seen my wacky rig videos before, you know that I prefer a straight shank hook on a wacky rig, but on a bait that's this small, a straight shank is a little overpowering. So that's why I'm going to a shorter shank, number two watt drop shot hook. And I'm simply hooking it right in the middle like that, right in the middle of the bait. And you do not, I don't use, you guys have seen the past videos. I don't use O-rings guys. There's no, no reason to use an O-ring. It's not gonna. It's gonna. It's, you're not gonna get as many bites with an O-ring, and you're gonna lose more fish. Yeah, you might lose a few more baits, but hooking it right through the middle like that, you're gonna land a lot more fish. The the bait falls more naturally. On a if you have a, a, a O-ring on there, basically your hook is like this on there. You don't get near the hook up. Doesn't fall as naturally. Doesn't look as naturally. So come right through the middle like that. Nice, simple setup like that. Just a three inch bait. Guys, I'm telling you right now, take my word for it. If you don't believe me, when you're wacky rigging this spring coming up and you get into a situation where you have, you know, at least three foot visibility and they're starting to bite a wacky rim a little bit, a wacky rig a little bit, they're starting to get shallow. You put this three inch beat down on a two watt drop shot hook and just wa wait and see what happens. I can promise you, you're gonna get more bites and it will catch good ones. When those fish get close to bedding, that water temperature's in the upper 50s, up until it gets about in the upper 60s in that zone where they're just on either side of bedding or bedding, you get in those bedding areas where you think those fish are nesting or getting close to nesting or garden fry after they nest, you throw this little three inch wacky rig beat down on there and I can promise you you guys are going to get a lot of bites on the thing. So what I like to do with it, one of the big keys is I'm using it on six pound test line. You don't want to use it on any heavier like that because it's light. It doesn't fall as good on there. I'm using it on straight uh, fluorocarbon six pound test Seaguar and Vizex line, Megabass Whip Snake spinning rod. 
And the thing about this thing, it's, it's, it falls really slow with a small, small hook in there. So you need to make long casts with it. You don't ne necessarily have to be around any target. I like to get the boat at like a 45 degree angle on the spawning type banks, make long casts. And I, and I try to target that three to 10 foot zone, depending upon the water clarity. The clearer the water is, the deeper I'm gonna go. Dirtier the water, the more I'm gonna stay a little bit shallower. But that three to 10 foot zone is gonna be key. And you have to let, give it time to work. It's just like, throw it out there, let it soak, just make a long cast and just hold your rod because 90% 90, 90 of the time, they're gonna get it either before it hits the bottom or right when it hits the bottom. The other 5% of the time, they're gonna get it after you worked it less than five feet. But most of the time when they're on this, especially in the clear water, you'll cast it out there and as it's sinking, the bait will get down close to the bottom, pretty close to the bottom and you'll just see your line start swimming off like that. This is just one of the funnest bites that you can possibly have with that. But guys, just a simple little tip today, not much to it. Basically, I'm just telling you to downsize your wacky, um, get a little three inch zoom beat down on there. If you don't have the beat down, um, you can't really use a Cinco because it's too fat on there. So what you can do is you can take like a zoom trick worm and bite it down or something like that, but keep it three inches long. And uh, the color patterns that I found that works the best on there is the, the, to me, the watermelon is the best color. I've tried green pumpkins. I've tried darker colors, 420s, all that type of stuff. But in, for whatever reason, th this watermelon red is a great color for it. Sometimes I'll put just a little bit of puff of chartreuse marker on the tails just to give it a little bit of color. But man, it's one of my favorite ways to catch them. It is the blast when they're biting up like that. So Give it a try, guys. Let me know how it goes. Once that water temperature starts hitting 58, 59, 60 degrees, throw this thing anytime you're wacky rigging and uh, give me the report on it. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated, and we'll talk later. See you.